It's time to feel the rage. Welcome to Film Rage, where we talk movies in cinema, streaming, and classic films as well. Directors and actors, beware, as you cannot hide from the rage. My name is Bryce, and I'm part of the Film Rage crew, which also includes Jim. Hey there, Jim. Hey, hey, Bryce. And this week marks the long-awaited return of the Merman. He's back, and I heard through the grapevine that he is better than ever. Are the rumors true, Merman? Are you indeed better than ever? You know it. So with the introductions out of the way, let's rage on. I experienced the Merman firsthand, so I know he's better. Well, thanks to all who've been supporting us. If you love our independent podcast, please like, subscribe, share, and give us a five star rating on your listening platform. Or support us and join the Film Rage community by joining our membership at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Film Rage YYC. If you cannot commit to a membership, you can still buy us a movie rental and dare us to see a terrible movie. And you know what? We'll watch it if it played in cinemas anywhere in the world. Now, let's get to raging. But first, here's a word from our sponsor. Hey, Bryce, what are you doing tonight? I'm going to my favorite cinema, Canyon Meadow Cinema, to see the best second-run movies at the best price. What? How inexpensive are they? Regular price is five bucks, five bucks. Regular price is five bucks, five bucks. Makes me hope they also serve pizza. They do, plus a lot of other great food choices. Plus, I'm planning my office Christmas party there. They can host a plethora of options for any get-together. Gaming, movie, drag show? Drag show? Now I know why I'm planning my next party. Hey, maybe you think there's a, a Liam Neeson or a superhero movie plan? Ugh, I hope not. But uh, maybe there'll be a great independent documentary. Sure. Call CMC at 403-670-5444 to book a special event or go online at canyonmeadowscinemas.ca. Now, it seems like we haven't been sitting in the same room together long time. for a long time. It's been like a week. And more than that. Oh. Because last week I was in Ontario, oh. and then before that I was sick for, I don't know, a couple, of years. a couple of years. A couple of years. So it's been more than a week. It's oh, been yeah. a while. It's, I miss this stinkhole of a basement that is our... It's not a stinkhole. ...of our home life. Home sweet home. Home sweet home. Film Rage Studios. Coming at you from the wonderful city of Calgary, Alberta. It's in Canada. In Canada. <laughs> what did we see? We saw... <laughs> White noise. Michael Keaton. Creeping. No, not that white noise. Thank God. Yes. I like that one. <sighs> that does not surprise me. <laughs> white noise is the latest offering from Noah Baumbach. It is based on the book from the mid 80s written by Don DeLillo. Even though it was written almost 40 years ago, the material is still relevant today. The big subjects covered in this include conspiracy theories, mass consumerism, pollution, mob mentality, and family. The film centers around the Gladney family as they deal with a sudden mass evacuation due to an airborne toxic event, all while dealing with their own idiosyncrasies. Adam Driver is at his best here as Jack, the patriarch of this family, and the nation's leading expert on Adolf Hitler. Every second Jack is on screen, he is understatedly mesmerizing. There are many broad things going on around Jack, yet Driver brilliantly... uh, Brilliantly is Adam Driver. Driver's brilliantly subtle performance makes him stand out. He had a belly too. He did not Cute little belly that he had. Greta Gerwig is solid once again as Babette, Jack's wife, who has kind of, she's got some secrets. Her performance is almost a little awkward at first, but that feeds into the, her motivations perfectly as the film plays out. The kids are also good with an enjoyable turn by Sam... Nicola? Sounds like it's true. My copy is like faded. I really need to... Change my toner. Change your toner. You change your toner. <laughs> you change your toner. Anyway, Sam Nicola, 
uh, played Heinrich, who has all the answers, even as he's asking the questions. And Rafi Cassidy as Denise, whose anxiety fuels her desire to help her mother. The supporting cast is excellent as well, lead, led by Don Cheadle as Murray Siskind, a colleague, a colleague of Jack's. Every scene involving Murray and Jack together brought me tremendous pleasure, especially the classroom scene where they discuss Elvis and Hitler. The scene plays out like a well-choreographed dance sequence, but the words, but with words instead of music. It is brilliant, as is this film. Noah Baumbach, I believe, has solidified his status in the realm of the undoubted with his thought-provoking, well-acted, and undeniably pleasurable experience known as White Noise. This film was Mondo. Mondo, huh? I'm looking at Murray's face. I don't know if he liked this white noise as much as he liked the other white noise. So, never had I had so much fun watching a period piece than seeing the overtly subtle comedy of a family in the 70s filled with intelligence, humor, and consumerism with a murder attempt, highbrow intellectual posturing, and a toxic cloud of death. I don't even know how to explain this film other than it was all so much fun. Adam Driver was at his all-time best, and Noah Baumbach was at his witty, satirical, master-minded fantasticness. I mean, to the end of this film, to end this film with a 10-minute dance music number after all this family went through was just the icing on this delicious cake this cast was brilliant from the youngest of the clfs to the oldest of the clfs Uh, as was the was the cinematography and the music the music was so put together as well as the sound this the ambiance created by the music in this film again is another thing that's just staggeringly done especially the closing number the film really puts us in the minds of a well put together family unit where the father is a professor of of course Adolf Hitler that in itself made this so so interesting this there is a scene which you've already alluded to that was so amazing where don Cheadle and adam driver have an elvis hitler off that builds to a frenzy of professorizing to a giant climax of joygasm for this scene alone this film deserves to be in the most classic halls of film history but add to that a cast of highly intelligent CLFs and characters that were so well developed there was not one character even how small a part that they had that you could not just absolutely lose yourself in each one of them for their brilliance this film had me on the edge of my seat the entire film I had no clue what was going to happen through the entire film the pacing was fantastic the humor was overt yet subtle and I couldn't stop thinking they captured a moment in time for the 70s from a highbrow family. And yet the, the delivery of it, especially with Adam Driver's character, where he's like the stupidest person on the face of the earth. But talk about Hitler and he knows his shit. I absolutely love this film. It was Mondo for me. And what did Murray think? <clears throat> 32 minutes. That's how long it took me to figure out what the hell was going on and what the story was actually supposed to be. The biggest issue for me was all the crosstalk. Smart people talking at 100 miles an hour in big words all at the same time. Yes. Yes. Pretty much everybody in the movie was smarter than me, even the kids. (laughs) Maybe I'm just an idiot. (laughs) I hate kids that are are that young and that big of smart asses. Like they know everything already. They're 10 years old. Um, It's got a premise that's hard to describe. Yeah. It's a disaster film, which I was actually moderately enjoying. But that's not the film's entire focus. 
No. That was like the first half of the movie. <clears throat> yes. Then it was something else. Yeah. It was like three short films all starring the same characters, and it was hard to figure out how it was all connected. Adam Driver is great as always. There were some funny parts. Yes. And much of the first hour was entertaining. All of it. Maybe I didn't get the point, you know, being an idiot. Having never seen a Noah Baumbach film till now. Really? No, I looked up on IMDb. I've never seen any of his films. Not one. Wow. Okay. Not even Marriage well, you Story, sure which I wanted one. to. Yeah, huh. Marriage Story. Marriage I wanted to amazing. see that one. That one I probably could have sat through because it was more or less normal. Um, these two obviously love the guy. But if all of his movies are like this, I'll pass on the Bombac Express. <laughs> it was a meh. And that is I'll me take being, it. We'll take it. And I'll be in generous with that. because That's I really, okay. I, I love will, your I will generosity. take your generosity. I smile will admit, on my face. I did enjoy and the, a song the, in my the, heart. The end dance sequence, although not enough to actually sit through the whole thing. I left before. You had it was to pee over. again, didn't you? No, I just wanted to leave. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I I can't get over the characters in this. Don Cheadle. Oh, Don Cheadle. We um after the movie on the way home, Bryce and I talked about when was the moment that you fell in love with Don Cheadle? Yeah. Do you remember Murray when you fell in love with Don Cheadle? Iron Man two. <laughs> okay. okay. Well. Hey, we'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> Iron Man I don't two. Know, he was okay. That. No, I'm sure it was before that. That is unexpected. Uh, that was a little unexpected, yeah. I think maybe Traffic was before that. You yeah, you're right. It traffic. Was. Traffic um, was before that. And the one directly after Traffic was where and I fell in love with him. Which was? Hotel Rwanda. Yeah. yeah which was amazing. Which is... He's seeing just, him in that movie? He, he's... he's another, he, that's where he takes his game to another level. And for the most part, he never... Never get uh, got off that level. I mean, there's times when you know he's in some movies that are. Eh. I think he picks movies sometimes. Like, I mean, he had to make mon- money, so he obviously made Iron Man too. All the Marvel movies. Yeah. Like yeah. Well, he's in the new ones too. Apparently, even though he can't walk anymore, he's still super. He walks around in that. Why can't he walk? Robot Same. suit. What happened? What happened to Iron? He got. He what broke is his it? Back. What's his name? He, he was, just broke his back. What's his name though? In the in the, in the uh, Marvel Gino, movies. Warhammer. Man or, of War. War Machine. War Machine. War, War, War Machine. Warhammer. Uh, Vision not knocked him out of the sky. He's paralyzed. All right, Broke his back. I don't even remember. There's but just he's, but he's there's still in the so suit. much going on in those movies. Just and saying, like, it's just like, noise and people flying all over the place. Like everybody else is is gone. From How can you keep Avengers, track of any of but it? But he's in the the new like Avengers one in like three years. What's well, like, because they know it's Don Cheadle. He deserves to be whatever. everywhere. Anyway, but you so know what's I, funny about he was, it? He was okay in this. Actually, what I think is really funny about this yes. that we brought in Murray's favorite Don Cheadle moment is the fact that Murray found this Noah Baumbach movie confusing because of, the, because of the dialogue, and then you find Iron Man 2 confusing because of all the action that's going on. I don't know and what's going Murray's, on. Murray's, Murray's perfectly intelligent enough to understand all the action, uh, and you're, you're, compu- you're completely an idiot when it comes to action. No, like, so it's kind of a really nice if, breed here. It's if, just if, noise. If there was one no. conversation, they had one conversation going on at a time in this movie, I probably could have followed it. Yeah. But like, say, like in, in the in the, the staff room where all the professors. Yes. Oh, what, so good. Eight different conversations. Yes. Nine know. different people. And they're, yes. I didn't know who was talking about what. I, I was lost. But, but, you know, that's, so that, that, that moment is, is, is totally professors at lunch wow. because they're all posturing to, to who has the bigger brain. And that's what made it so funny is because it's as awesome. you're looking at Adam Driver's character, he's clueless yeah he is so like he's overmatched basic. by everybody in the room yeah, by everybody he's not room. talking about hitler <laughs> yeah i mean he's got no chance he's got nothing except hitler which is which makes it which even is the more dumbest thing ever which, to specialize. which is, I know. That's, well, that's why it's and not funny. once in the whole two and a half two and a half hour movie when he's talking about hitler any of those times did he ever mention the holocaust 
Like yeah. all you ever talked about was Hitler was how great he was and how much he loved his mother. And I'm like, well, yeah, he did. He talk killed about millions he never of people. Said he was great. Oh, no, yeah, he, he, he did not so many words. Yeah, he, no, he wasn't necessarily saying Hitler was great. No, he was basically he just saying mother. the facts. He's trying to help the you understand where he Hitler. came from. Yeah, yeah, yeah the just, facts. Just the facts, just Jack. Just the facts, man. Yeah, he didn't facts. talk about the war or the Holocaust. Just see what I did. His, there? his childhood, the Jack. Yeah, just the facts, Jack. Anyway, I'm glad you guys liked it. Funny. Well, I'm glad that you didn't hate it. It was too long. It was cut a half was, hour. I might have oh been able to no! Through. It was perfect. Anything over two hours, I can't do. I loved it. Yeah, there you go. Well, and the sad thing is, because of my level of sickness, we didn't get to watch a second film. But you know what? Christmas is coming, and we're going to get to see a shit Christmas ton of movies. Christmas there's about eight different movies coming. <clears throat> That's right. So be prepared for our January first film, first episode in January. January yeah. It's going to be. A uh, film rage a thon or something. Film rage a thon. Yeah. There you go. The yeah. Cra- the crazy. <laughs> it's the crazy. I'm pumped. Right. Hey, I haven't uh, heard that music in a while. I know. It's like I wasn't here. Well, I asked about you every week. He I'm did. Sure, you did. This are we getting the top Ryan Reynolds movies <laughs> that are Christmas films. I wouldn't crazy? dare because you guys hate them all. <laughs> Um, no, this is my it's minute true. from the last podcast I was supposed to be a part of. Ah. Okay. Which I just basically saved for the last month. Nice. So it's a little dated. Still appropriate. Always appropriate. Okay. This is about Wakanda Forever. <gasps> which okay. you guys saw, which okay. I did not. All right. On the principle of it. Nice. So. From what I hear, you guys didn't enjoy it as much as the rest of the world. But so this is True. not quite what I wrote originally. But um, I'm sure the whole world's in love with Wakanda forever. I'm sure, even you guys shed some man tears at the end mm, during nope. one, of, nope. one of the three funerals they had. No, no, nope. no. Nope. I was the few, one of the few who did not like the first Black Panther. Mm. Why would I go to this one without Chadwick Boseman? Like, there was no point. And they, they never told you who the damn Black Panther was going to be. All these, that's, all the trailers and promos what, they ever showed. supposed to get you to the theme. All they showed was her, you know, crying over her, her, her family gone. I'm like, okay, who the hell is going to be the Panther? That's the intrigue. Whatever. Not that three, was the not bait. Three hours yeah. Worth. Anyway. It was the worm on the hook. So, in a weird reversal... Because you know how much I love superhero movies. Yeah. The best movies with Chadwick Boseman. I am going to be the one to do some superhero bashing for a while. What? This is the best day of my life because Murray never bashes superheroes. This is superhero why movies. the MCU sucks <gasps> now. Oh. Okay. This isn't a this isn't a merman rage. It is a rage. Uh, first of all, the MCU relies on cheap jokes. True. True that. The early films used humor to diffuse otherwise serious and tense situations. Mm-hmm. Jokes help tell the story, create funny character interactions. Later MC- movies, jokes often interrupted the flow of the story, i.e. Love and Thunder. Oh, God. Which could not be saved even with Taika Waititi's unique humor. And which is pretty much where I turned on the whole superhero genre because just recently, then. I wanted to love that movie so much. I know. It's got and Thor it just, and Taka. It broke my heart in two. And once you break Murray's heart, it's, it's really hard it's to like mend Molnir. it. It's like Molnir. Molnir? Whatever, the hammer. It's mm. broken a thousand pieces. Like, that's it. That's what happened to my heart. And only hugs and money can make Murray better. And Jane Foster. Mm. Jane All Foster. right. What's a Jane Foster? <laughs> that is the mighty Thor. Yeah, you know, the dead wife of Thor. Well, the, no, they were never it's married. It's a zombie Thor now? No, his girlfriend. <laughs> Tony was Thor. Yeah. Anyway. And she's well, a zombie? Right. No, she didn't come <laughs> back. She I don't remember dead. any of this. I got to watch that did movie again. Did you see Love and Thunder? Yeah. Did see I were, didn't see any zombie did, did Thors. Did you see there were two, two Thors in that movie? One was a woman. One, one was, was a woman. Man. Yeah, that's, but that's, that's she Jane. wasn't She wasn't dead. She well, died at the end. She died at the end. So she's a zombie? No, no she she's just, just dead. She just died. Died of cancer. Then if it, she was a zombie, it might have been okay. Yeah, well, then yeah. who's Thor? Thor is Thor. And his What Thor is daughter. going on Thor right now? Thor Odinson from Asgard is, is Chris Hemsworth. Okay. The other one's a fake one. Backtrack a second. So when do we get to see zombie Thor? You don't. Uh, actually, you do. If you look at the What If series on there you Disney go. Plus, there's a zombie yeah, Thor. Yeah, you go onto your streaming services. You That's right. That, that we all hate. 
Okay. Now, let's get back to anyway, the Man Minute. Next up, Spider-Man movies showed the MCU's limitations. Like now, while the Tom Holland movies had major success, can mm. argue with the box office, they were not really you that. Can dis- they, argue they weren't with that it. distinct. When compared to Sam Raimi's trilogy and Mark Webb's Amazing Spider-Man duology, they just weren't as good. Plus, mm. you had Toby. Uh, oh, the Toby. Raimi trilogy and Amazing Spider-Man Toby. duology were inventive and distinctive. And the MCU's Spider-Man films just seemed constrained. They were just bland, right? Mm-hmm. I like the last one. We liked it, but not Next a lot. Next up, Quite The a Hulk. Mr. Potato right here. Started yes. out as one of the best characters in the MCU with his sympathetic journey and inner struggles. After Age of Ultron, he became more of a joke. Films like Thor Ragnarok, which I actually enjoyed him in. We all did. Basically ruined Hulk's character by including too much humor. Not focusing enough on Bruce Banner and the Hulk's relationship. Mm. Avengers Endgame basically skipped over the whole character development and just got into Professor Hulk right there. Like they didn't mention how he got there; it just was there. But you know, the good thing about that there is a there is a silver lining, is that we get less of Mark Ruffalo. That's not good. It's the best. More Mark Ruffalo is always better. No. Plus, uh, Hulk pops up in She Hulk. Yeah. Well, Attorney let's not, let's at not Law. Talk about it. Web, streaming web series. Yeah, that's also terrible. Also I terrible. couldn't get I past the second episode. It. Really? I didn't uh, mind it. Okay. And also, lots of fans left after Avengers Endgame because it was Endgame. That's it. Story was over. Okay. It's an enormous hit. Many people consider it one of the best. You guys Who? Didn't. What? <laughs> Endgame is also the point that many people stopped watching the MCU movies. I never Many fans believe that the main story had just wrapped up, which it basically had. Okay. As a That's result, what... some audience felt there was no need to keep watching the rest, which shows it, and not everyone they, that comes out. I feel this too, but they, Bryce they keeps few, making us watch them. Fewer uh, fans, uh, and then box office numbers don't motivate filmmakers to make better movies. No, they go for the cash grab. True. MCU suffers from being lifeless and lazy. True. The more recent and films Disney-fied. feel, yeah, well, yeah, Disney owns, and that's the other problem. They feel r- very routine and a commonplace and maybe less motivation. However, they still do well at the box office, which doesn't m- the mo- uh, motivate, motivate them, them to make stop. Any, make any, exactly. any better. They, oh, we'll just make they're you know, killing half cinemas. a billion dollars at every movie. This is make everything the same. Mm-hmm. It's like Disney does. And finally, MCU shows and movies take the focus off the main heroes. Mm. I'm going to say it. There are way too many Marvel TV shows. The movies and shows are pushing aside their big heroes to focus on side characters. Example, the new Captain America. Spoiler alert, Steve Rogers got old and retired. But he was a super soldier with superhuman strength and speed. Sam Wilson has a pair of wings and some Uzis. Nice. At this point, who really cares about these new characters? I sure don't. Here's what we have to look forward to from the MCU. All right. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yeah, it looks In terrible. February. Looks terrible. Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Mm. In May. The second one was meh. The Marvels, which is the Captain Marvel sequel with, I don't know. A bunch of Marvels. Things. Yeah, the that's Marvels. July. Then a whole year and a half from now, the new Captain America. New World Order with Sam Wilson. What's and his Sam Wilson? The black guy. What's his name? Anthony Mackie. Oh, He's Captain America The best now? actor. Yeah, yeah. Watch, yeah, see, you watch the series. I don't either. I did watch the series. I, did. I didn't. Is that, is it that, is that, did that happen at the end of the series? Yeah, I when, when, when what's-his-face, Chris Evans came back and handed him the shield and said, you're, you're now... Was that in the movie or the TV? Oh. Well, there, 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 there. I thought it was in the movie. Well, the yeah, was series, that in the movie? The that series, the the yes, movie. the series ha- had him come to the point where he says, yeah, okay, I'll be it. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I don't really. We have something it. called the Thunderbolts, which I have no idea what that is. No, that's, that's not a thing. That, that doesn't. Good. That doesn't sound that's right. Thing. <laughs> then we have the new Blade, twenty twenty four. If Wesley Snipes isn't Blade, not it's not Wesley worth watching. Snipes. I can't remember who. The and if Guillermo del Toro's not directing one of them, then it's not it worth it either. Blade. And then the only one. Blade's I'm looking, MCU. Yeah. Yes. I didn't even know that. He's gonna join. Super Friends or whatever the yeah, MCU's Super, Super Friends are, yeah. Avengers. Super Friends is Blade, uh, isn't Blade, Blade a vampire Avenger. or yeah, part vampire or something? They'll, they'll need vampire him. Killer. They'll need him He's to half vampire. 
They'll have to. They'll need him to kill so other gonna, vampires. Is he gonna hang out with see. like that Morbius guy? Yeah, he's gonna kill Morbius. Yeah, he's hope. gonna kill Morbius. Sure, let's hope. I think I they'd be know. friends. Don't then they have like have, similar stuff going on? We have the only one I am looking forward to, which you guys are not. Okay, Deadpool three yeah, yeah, with Hugh Deadpool Jackman 3. as Wolverine. Finally, those two together. That because, one sounds good. I love Hugh Jackman. Uh, but it's a Disney production, so we'll so see. It'll what be they, terrible. It'll, yeah, it'll be PG. Then a new fantastic. You can't make Deadpool PG. <laughs> well, it's Disney. They're gonna try. <laughs> then we have another Fantastic Four. Yes, they're recasting again. Again, what is this? I think it was times. John Krasinski is one of them. I can't remember who the rest. So is this are. still gonna be like a Sony co-production? I think Sony bought, uh, sold, uh, sold it. So it's gonna be exclusively MCU this time. I think so. Then we have the Avengers: The Kang Dynasty, who apparently is a new bad Fuck guy. Can What's I a please? Kang? Can we please? That's in 2025. Then we okay. have. Why, why are we? They're, they're wrapping it up. Are with, we even going to be alive in 2025? That's like. I don't want to so be if this is what away. I have to look Then they're wrapping to. all these movies up with Avengers The Secret Wars in 2026. So this time, the first one took like, what, 40 years to complete? This one's going to take four? Sure. No, I don't know. So, so my point is, something. by the time the Avengers finish the war, will anybody care anymore? <laughs> I don't care now. So what does that mean? I don't know, but anyway, that that's what I had built up for the last month when Black Panther came out. So you know, you had to hear normally that. after the Merman Minute, I, I have so much joy in my heart I that I want to love the world. This trip, Merman Minute is setting me up nicely for a good rage. I don't even know what's going on anymore. The planet is dying. Exactly. We don't have proper water. We have microplastics, and now we have the MC. Crypto, crypto is destroying crypto the world. Shit. Temperature rising. Vision blurring. Rage taking over. a completely ra- different rage set up for this mm. but thanks to the merman minute it's blasted me into the future of rage and i am begging you to begging you with all of my heart and soul to please stop make us watching these terrible superhero movies they're all terrible they have the same plot i can't stand any of them there's not one original concept in any of them and you can predict everything that's going to happen because the good guys win and the bad guys lose, but nobody dies because everybody loves each other. It is, it's terrible. I don't want to watch them anymore. Dare me to watch them on Rage or Dare, but there's got to be other movies we can see in cinema. Got 10 words for you. What? The podcast is not called Film Love. It's called Film Rage. <sighs> you always use that as an example. It doesn't make me want to pay my... Money Stop for hitting them. your head into the mic. I hate them. Yeah. Hate, 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 hate. I get it. Hate them. I'm with you. And we're going to the next one. Ugh, I hate you too. Still love you, Murray. Thanks. But I hate Bryce. It's all right. I would never make you see a superhero movie. I, I'm fine going on my own. <laughs> if, I, if I go to them at all. I might be sick that week. Yeah. I'll get... What's a really deadly illness that I could potentially recover from. Plague. <laughs> Syphilis. Plague is hard. Syphilis is treatable. They have deadly gonorrhea, but go. then it's got the word that deadly in it. terrible. Yeah. You don't, I don't think you want deadly gonorrhea. That's... Well, if you can miss, every time I, every time one of the MCU like, films like come out. Like a mild case of deadly gonorrhea. <laughs> <laughs> is it maybe not so deadly gonorrhea? Yeah. I'll take that version of gonorrhea. Give me the not I so cannot go one. see this because my dick is green and I can't get off the couch. For a fortnight. Okay, so if you hear this excuse, then you know what happened. You know the movie. My oh, rage this week is oh, you're going. is these stupid, terrible, awful superhero movies. I'm sick of them. Yeah. We see a movie like White Noise, which is the, one of the most creative films that's ever been made. Yeah, and next, Original and and next week I'm going to Avatar, so stick it. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> did we mention already that uh, White Noise... Was playing on one 
screen. Yes. In a city. Hey, with shut all, up. With, shut up. With a city over a Shut up. <laughs> just just shut up. Just saying. There was 12 just people shut in the up. cinema, though. That's right. Just shut up. Can you people. please play my rage music? <laughs> now, excuse me. Stealing your thunder. <laughs> I don't even know if I should do my rage anymore. Sure. Is it about the MCU also? No. Is it the same as last week? My rage, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, has been in theaters for weeks now and is playing on 16 different screens in Calgary. White Noise is playing on one screen in Calgary. That is my rage. Wow. That's... Murray, you didn't mention, <clears throat> as I was going to finish my thought, is there are over a hundred screens in our city? Yes. And this movie was playing in one. And 16% of them are showing a movie that's been out for four or five weeks or whatever. Yep. And it's terrible. Pretty much. And it's that. terrible. Pretty much. Yeah. Can we just talk, just to jump on top of that, because you used the word, the swear word, Wakanda forever. The, um, the whole fact that, um, you know, we hate that whole concept of white savior, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, when when you reviewed it, I have to give extra kudos to you for that because I wasn't sure exactly what was bothering me so much about it. But here they have two ethnic societies with their with their um, rights, and they're putting them to pit against each other. When they should be joining, they should forces. be joining forces and fucking kicking the ass, kicking of the, the ass of the evil white man, man. Yeah, it's like, and and yet they try and make it seem like. Like they kind of just brush over it, yeah. but the, the message wasn't the message that they were delivering wasn't that you know um, this is happening to them and and they should do this. The the they they somehow wrote into a Disneyfied script that they should be they should be again pushing down. Like I don't know what people of color thought watching this movie, yeah. but. I mean, Weird. it's making me angry that they didn't actually have a Wakanda forever. I don't forever understand that why that hasn't been go. brought up more because it just doesn't. It makes no like it's it makes no sense. They started the the movie started and it was actually making sense. Yeah. And there was you know yeah okay we're gonna be going against the rest of the world. Hey, great! We've got these other guys that are having the same problem with these jackasses trying to steal their resources too. Yep. Let's all get together. Let's defend our... Yeah, no, that's not... Let's just go fight let's each other. Why, each why other. are we fighting each other? I still don't know. Because of white privilege. <sighs> that's it. Anyways. So ultimately, our, my rage added on to yours was, was white privilege. It makes me rage. And the fact that there's only three movies playing in all of our screens in the whole city. Yeah. So you can't find anything you want to watch. Well, that's going to be different over Christmas. We're going to get to see well, yeah, a bunch like, of crap. Christmas Eve or like Boxing Day everything comes out like yeah let's wait till people are home at Christmas with their relatives then you know let's put every good movie that's out there all at once like yeah good. no there won't be any good movies out I beg to differ oh, I figured you would <laughs> rage subsiding pulse slowing anger fading So 2021 is a us, and instead of flying cars and monkey robot butlers, we have a pandemic. We have media and making every little annoying twit of a child think they're going to be the next famous celebrity because they did some stupid trend they've seen somebody else doing nine million times. We have people that are self-entitled and stupid and given a voice through social media constantly whining about how everybody else is the problem and how everyone else needs fixings. We have celebrities lecturing us about how we have to give more so we can elevate everyone to a better life from the security of their seven-bedroom, multi-million dollar estates. We have politicians lying to us that they're going to fix the situations we're in that they created in the first place. And then we've got me having the conversations that a lot of us are thinking but nobody's talking about. Because these things have to be said. I had to say at the podcast. Available wherever you get your podcast fix or at www.ihadtosayapodcast.com. Why don't you come listen to what I've got to say? Well, we got a little bit of change up this week. So, um, we I put that we might need to talk about Noah Baumbach in anticipation that Murray might have actually hated the movie. 
But I thankfully, but thankfully he didn't. So Noah Baumbach, you are still oh. undoubted. Yay! I guess it would be unfair of me to condemn the guy after the one movie of his I've seen. Yeah, okay. don't, don't, you don't want to watch any of these. Yeah, when the, yeah. When the yeah. next don't, movie comes out, just don't go to see that yeah, one. Just don't even go. And then come back and see another one because you'll probably oh, get that me, one. There's something that he's it made that'll make me rage. I'm sure. Oh yeah, I mean, I don't. He's, I don't, I don't Oh. Although I was, I was actually hoping to see Marriage Story. That was it's, like, but it's Marriage three years Story ago. is devastating. But it was three years ago. It yeah, but but also Marriage Story it's is heavy. not also not a Murray movie because it's very 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 heavy. The performances by ScarJo and and Adam Driver wow. are beyond fantastic. Well, they it. both should have got Oscars. Hey, I, yeah. So if for that reason, you should see it, but you will not like the story because oh, it's I, very, very I, heavy I, drama. I lived through divorce. I mean, I, yeah. So you're gonna I've be you're gonna be it's, sad. It's traumatic. You're gonna anyway, be sad. But now I guess I don't have to. Yeah. Well. Okay. So the other thing I wanted to bring up on here. Yeah. Which is kind of a moot point. Okay. Because if we put Don Cheadle on as mesmerizing. Yeah, he's gone already. He's gone already because, because Adam, Adam Driver, Driver blew took everybody him out. out of the water. But yeah. before. Okay, so can we talk about his performances and everything up until that point so that we could say he was mesmerizing for at least two minutes? 30 seconds. Yeah, Do we think Don Tito is mesmerizing aside from White Noise? But I just saw White Noise. I know, but pretend you haven't seen it. How can I do just that? Just do it. Do-do-do-do. Okay, so I'm going back in time a back week time. ago, and you're asking yeah. me, Don Cheadle, is Don, isn't is he Don Cheadle mesmerizing? Yeah, he is. Yes, yeah. Murray, what do you think? Do you think Don Cheadle's mesmerizing? I really say no. Yeah, there you go. So Don Cheadle is mesmerizing. Okay. But wait, didn't we see the movie White well, we Noise? We just saw White Noise, and Adam and Driver, Adam Driver was, was, and he was amazing. Was the most amazing, most. But wait a minute, yeah. Adam Driver is he even on our mesmerized list? He's not. So, Why isn't he? so then that poses the question. Why is Adam Driver not on our mesmerized list? You know, I... And you know what? We had talked about him before. And if you remember what you said... What did I say? At that point, you had said that you hadn't seen enough Adam Driver films to be able to make an accurate... No, I don't... No, no, because this was a long time ago. Okay, this was, maybe a long this time was, ago. This was a long time ago, like in the, in the age of Star Wars. But he's been in how many fucking movies in the last two years? I will say that after getting directed by Ben Affleck, he's upped his game because Ben Affleck has a a ability to do that for actors. See, you know what? That's the movie he was in. That's right, and he was mesmerizing in that. Uh, Compared to the other two, yeah. Oh yeah, like he (laughs) he he crushed them so hard it wasn't funny. Yeah, the movie was so horrible. Oh my god, but, it was bad. Ben but, Affleck brings out the best in actors. Yeah, so, so what? And the what, miracle is, is that he's in that movie too, and he was so amazing. The, the thing that Ben Affleck does to is, me is, is makes me sick uh, to my stomach. If he had for just, the most part, if he had just directed the movie. I probably could have tolerated it, but no. But he, he whatever. He was perfect. No, the, Murray, in the, movie. the movie was directed terrible too. Don't forget. No, it was it. not. Not seeing his face would have would not made, would have hated his mind. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Can I please just leave you with the I, fact? I, I, this is obviously just like a joke. You guys are just continuing. No, I think to, I think and, our listeners I, think I, that I respect, you're. I respect the fact that you've you've stretched this out as long as you have. But come on, guys, let's just let's be serious. Ben Affleck's the best. No, and I think you know what the funniest thing is. I don't know how many of our listeners, the best on actor social, of mine or any other social generation. media, actually think it's the other way. Not very many people like Ben Affleck the way you do. That's true. At You're any in, rate, he did bring the best out of Adam Driver, and Adam that, Driver's been amazing ever since. So. Yeah, like okay, so let's just talk about Adam Driver's last few films. Oh yeah, okay. White Noise. House yeah, Gucci. mesmerizing. Is, he was mesmerizing. House, House of Gucci. He was absolutely mesmerizing. He was mesmerizing. absolutely mesmerizing. The Last Duel, he crushed everybody in that film because everything was terrible. Annette, Annette, he was amazing in that. Yeah. Plus, on top of that, we had the Sparks Brothers. Yeah. Um, every single person in the Star Wars, Star Wars, Marriage Story. I don't... He, he even crushed ScarJo. Yeah, yeah he, was, he was he really was good in that. So... Oh, no, no. The, Dead don't die. Yeah, so the dead don't die. We have to rewatch, is what it is, Marie. Oh, I know who else is in that. I know. That's why we have to decide. He also loves. No, no, she's gone. 
Yeah, Tilda Swinton's gone, now? but Bill Tilda Murray's Swinton's gone. Yeah, Tilda Swinton's gone, Murray. But but Bill, Bill Murray Murray's isn't. Still there. So Bill Murray and Adam Driver. So By the we, way, it broke my freaking heart the day Tilda Swinton got I eliminated. Know. Yeah, and it was in a movie that he hated. And it was in a movie that I'm like, why the bleepity blank was she even this in this piece of dog crap? It's it's uh Constantine. Constantine, one of yeah. the best movies ever made. Uh, that's right. It's awful. The yeah, best actor die. of ours or any generation. I can't believe that's the what report? took her down. I don't, I don't so, uh, when we come it's back in the new ridiculous. year, the first list film we will be watching again is The Dead Don't Die. Because I think you also had to rewatch to that re-watch. anyway because, I need to it. because of something else. I can't uh, remember why. Was it because of Jarmish? Maybe. Maybe. Because we, we wanted like, to see if Jarmish was. Because yeah, Jim was, Jarmish was, has directed some was of my favorite huh. movies. That's curious. Yeah. So. In the new year, we will have Bill Murray versus Adam Driver in The Dead Don't Die. Look for that in January. Yeah. Well, even though we had really nothing to talk about on list, we still had some good stuff to talk uh, about. Anytime we can talk about Ben Affleck, it's a good day. Yeah, especially when it's for talking you. about how terrible he is. So. Yo, just stop. Everybody knows you're kidding, so it's cool. No. Everybody knows I'm dead. Really not. Serious. <laughs> I love him, too. Last week on Rage or Dare, the boys pulled from my torturous bag of evil remakes to find the conveniently timed 2012 remake of Red Dawn. This week, Bryce gets his dose of death by High School Musical 3. Let's see, will he take it orally or as a suppository? It's Bryce, so to paraphrase Wesley Snipes, always bet on anal. Now, let's check in with the boys and see if a Korean invasion will be as delicious as some tasty kimchi, or if it will be more like a visit from Dennis Rodman. Actually, those both sound kind of tasty. And by tasty, I mean a tasty helping of rage. <laughs> I love Casey. <sighs> He's the best. Okay. Um... Can we just stop for a second before you go into this? Yeah. What I want to say, possibly the worst thing he's ever put in his bag, is that everybody's going to get more Casey coming up. Because in, I think, two weeks' time from now, he will be on our annual Krampus special. So get ready to get all the Casey you can take. There you go. Now, what do you think of Red Dawn 2012? Um... I th- I think Casey has broken me. Red Dawn was poop. It was so bad that I would really not like to relive it with a review. Um, I'm even going to plug my ears when Jim talks about it. <laughs> as I just refuse to relive this anymore. I may have to... <sighs> I don't know. I just don't know anymore. I'm thinking I'm going to have like traumatic episodes for the rest of my PTSD life. you got PTSD from watching I, I, another I, Casey thing? I, I'm just going to be trying to erase this experience from my memory. Um, <laughs> the first time I saw it back in 2012, it, it didn't affect me like this. I, I thought it was unnecessary and bad, but I don't remember being this bad. I think the cumulative effects of Casey's torturous bag of remake hell may be the reason that I cannot bring myself to even talk about this. I have never considered going to therapy, but I may not be able to deal with this with, with like the mental anguish all by myself that Casey has caused me over these past months. And now I'm seriously considering getting some outside help. Red Dawn is the straw that broke the camel's back. Or more accurately, it's the movie that broke me. It's also a rage. But was it Life of David Gale I'm, rage? I'm not talking... No, I'm not talking about... No, there's, nothing's worse than the Life of David Gale. But it's the cumulative, cumulative effects of this. Like, like why, 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 why? How can somebody why? be so good at delivering rage? This is sadistic. They, they, I'm starting to think that Casey, Casey is actually evil. He is. He is. That's why we brought him on. How many times has Bryce said in the past... You people just don't get it. We want to see stuff that's going to break us. And now, that moment has happened. 
Bryce is officially broken. But you know what? You haven't had a break. Everyone that got came from my bag and everyone that's come from Casey's bag, you used to get pulling from the listener's dare bag. And there was a lot of stuff that came out of there as Matt. I miss the listener's <laughs> dare bag. We need to bring that You've back. You've been constantly barraged by terrible... Uh, and then I got a juicy break last week because you got me to watch the Apple. Yeah, I felt like uh, so. Yeah. Anyways, go ahead and talk about it, but I ain't listening. Well, I hope you do listen because this this was uh, uh, first off the first iteration of this movie was bad enough, but this one and the whole concept of North Korea being able to invade makes absolutely no sense. Plus the fact that. Doesn't every single American have at least 20 gun, 27 guns per person? If they wanted to make this even partially believable, have it be a real country invading, like China or Russia, not a Korean-led by Russian team. The sheer number of North Koreans and the equipment they had made this so hard to believe. But you know what? These boys can save America! This was Fast and the Furious, but with kids. You know, kind of like Goonies, but, because you know. They're high school kids. That's yeah, but with high school kids. And it had Fast and the Furious physics-defying, plus over-the-top rah-rah American. Once you get past their ignorance of letting themselves get onto American soil and all the technology they had, even if most of their troops were overseas, like the Americans... This would never happen. On top of that, the Korean army needed to spend a ton of its resources to find seven kids. Everything about this seems so dumb. And that's the best way I can think to describe it. And I'm trying to dumb down my words to not use big words to describe how dumb this film was. It almost felt like a longer episode of the A-Team for after a while you're watching it. But without Mr. T, it's not worth seeing an episode of the A-Team. But how many times did we have to see Chris Helmsworth do his bastardized Braveheart pep talk speech before I threw up? I think it was probably about three. It took me three times before he made one of his stupid speeches. And then follow up that with at the end, they have his pouty brother start saying his stupid Braveheart speech. Plus the fact everyone else has to go through stop checks and are under surveillance. But the kids can walk around in plain sight everywhere. And what must have have had to have been six months of training in the woods and interacting with people, no one else in an American town slash city joined their resistance? This makes absolutely no sense. These are goddamn Americans. They're not going to let some fucking Korean dictators take over their country. They're going to they're gonna kick ass until the last dying day. Don't forget seasoned Marines that are stupider than these kids. Excuse me? But the end perfectly tied this film together as it ended where the beginnings of the purge began, I think. Right? This was the start of the purge, wasn't it? Isn't the purge came after this movie? Right? It's the purge. I wasn't listening. Sorry. I don't yeah. Know what um, if not, then, you know, I want to see the purge movie of this and then kill that whole town. The only thing that would be carrying an American fr- flag would be the purge people when they purge this town. This was so completely awful. And oh, yes, of course, it was a rage. Casey is the god of rage. Yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I don't even know what to say. I mean, isn't um, Nicolas Cage God of War? And Thor is God of Thunder? But Casey, the nerdy photographer, is God of Rage. Okay. It's official. All hail Casey. Uh, no. One of us. No. One of us. One of us. Not hailing One that, of... that evil bastard. All right. Well, let's see if you'll hail this, because it's Bryce's turn to go into the Chunky Monkey bag of High School Musical 3. You guys still haven't pulled that yet? Nope. Oh. We've, been, we've been taking our chances. And our next Rager Dare 
will be our last one for the year, and then we'll come back What's in the new year. What's going on? There are so many stuck together here. I'm trying to pull one. You can do it. I think Did I've you got get one? one. Yes, I think I've got one. All right. So when we come back next week, Bryce will be watching. I don't. I don't know what this is. Apparently, it's got two names, or maybe that's not. Maybe it doesn't. I don't understand. Hard Cash, a.k.a. Run for the Money. It is not High School Musical 3. That's good. But it is good because that means that I still might not have to watch that. Yeah, so this is from 2002. Okay. And it stars the ever fabulous Christian Slater and Val Kilmer. Okay. Oh, okay. Is that what it's yeah. called? Hard Cash. And this was released in the theaters? Oh, of oh, course yeah. it was. It's got Val Kilmer in it. He, he doesn't do anything. He doesn't do anything. Why has it got two names then? Yeah, because it was probably so bad they tried to rename it when they released it. So um, the worldwide gross for this yeah. at the box office. Do you want to do a? You guys want to play a quick game here? Sure. Closest to without going over. Okay, I'm going to say two hundred billion dollars. Okay, you're over. Uh, Eighty mil. Okay, Guess. I'm going to say eighty-seven thousand dollars. And Val Kilmer, Christian Slater. Yep. In two thousand two. In two thousand two. Seventy five. Not, not in nineteen. Okay, so Bryce, your guess was eighty seven thousand. And yours was seventy five. No. The real answer was one hundred and fifteen thousand. I was oh, close. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was a little better. So that. Bryce wins. What do I win? You get to watch this movie. You get to watch this movie. <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't seem like winning at all. <laughs> hey, Bald Sargetti's in this. I don't even know who that is. That's the kid from Lord of the Lord of the Flies. Oh. And Daryl Hannah. Yeah, that's not making me want to watch it. Well, yeah, unless Forsyth. she's directed by Quentin Tarantino, she's on. Vern Troyer's in this. Are you kidding? Yeah. Oh. Murray's gonna, I think Murray's going to watch this now. Uh, I don't know about that. I do like Christian Slater. He's one of my one of my favorites. All right, I'm watching Hard Cash, aka Run for the Money. From 2002. <laughs> enjoy that. Oh, I like baby. Christian Slater. I like I Val do. Kilmer. I love my Christian Slater. How bad can it be? There you go. I'm going to find out. I think Christian Slater is the... Um, he's yeah, cool. Cool. Yeah, you don't like Christian movie. Slater. I, I like think him. he's pretty one-dimensional. Mm. Well, thanks, Ragers, for listening. Thanks, the extended Film Rage family, who you can find in our show notes. Thanks to Casey, the nerdy photographer for the voice of Rager Dare, and is now going to be dubbed... The God of Rage. Find us everywhere on social media at Film Rage YYC. Check out everything Film Rage at FilmRageYYC.com, including our merch site for Redbubble and Public. We do not make any money for making this podcast, so if you like us, please give us money. We are always wanting to make this a raging blast for all listeners, so please comment, like, and subscribe, and send us an email to FilmRageCalgary at gmail.com. Dare us to see terrible movies to fuel our rage, but no matter what you do... Please make us rage. Please, 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 pretty please, please. That's it, Father. That's our wake. Rage on. Rage on.